untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard gameplay video. The footage you're about to see was recorded during the early access event for March of the Machine, so thank you to Wizards for inviting me to participate to preview the new expansion. And this black-white Phyrexian Sacrifice deck features a ton of new cards, starting with Elish Norn. The 4-mana 3-5 Legendary Praetor with Vigilance says whenever a source an opponent controls deals a damage to you or a permanent you control, that source's controller loses 2 life unless they pay 1 mana. So this can be incredibly taxing against opposing creature decks, since they'll need to pay that uh, 2 life or 1 mana for every creature that deals damage to both us or our creatures, so that adds up very quickly. And then the plan is to pay two and a white, sacrifice three other creatures to transform Elishnorn into the Argent Etchings. A saga starting from chapter one where we get to incubate two five times and then transform all those incubator tokens into Phyrexians. So that will essentially add 10 power and toughness to the board. Then on chapter two, creatures we control get plus one plus one and gain double strike until end of turn, which is usually game over if we still had those creatures in play. And then last but not least, to destroy all other permanents except for artifacts, lands and Phyrexians, and then transform it back into Elish Norn. So very powerful card, and our deck supports Elish Norn by including lots of cheap creatures that we don't mind sacrificing, including some Phyrexian tokens as well. And our other sacrifice synergies include a bloated processor, a 3 mana 3 2 Phyrexian, says we can sacrifice another Phyrexian at any time to put a plus one plus one counter on it, and when it dies we get to incubate X, where X is its power, so that will leave behind a pretty substantial incubator token, which we can also turn into a Phyrexian. And then other payoffs include two copies of the Sadistic Pilgrim, 2-2 two -two Death Touch, also a Phyrexian, says whenever another creature enters under our control we gain one life, great way to offset Skrelv's Hive, which loses one life each turn, and then whenever another creature we control dies, each opponent loses one life. So with a processor in play we can sacrifice a bunch of our creatures at once to trigger Pilgrim if necessary. And then we also have two copies of Vran, another Phyrexian 2-drop, saying whenever one or more other creatures we control die, each opponent loses two life and we gain two life, but this ability only triggers once each turn. But with the processor it's pretty easy to enable Vran both in our turn as well as the opponent's turn. And then another great new addition to the Phyrexian tribe is a Grafted Butcher, 2 mana 2 2 Phyrexian. When it enters, creatures we control that are Phyrexian gain menace until end of turn, and other Phyrexians get plus 1 plus 1 permanently for as long as we control the Butcher. And we can even return it from the graveyard to the battlefield pretty easily by paying 4 mana and sacrificing an artifact or a creature, and then by coming back it will give our team menace once again. And between all the cheap incubator tokens and small tokens, we can pretty easily sacrifice one of those to get back our butcher if it did not get exiled. And then we also need some cheap sacrifice fodder to enable all these synergies. And that's where a crawling chorus is very useful. A 1 1 with toxic 1. We're not a poison deck, but the poison can sometimes help in enabling the seed core or the life gain on Skrull's Hive. So it's still a nice upside. And then when it dies, it will leave behind a might token which cannot block. Then we also have four copies of the Icker Drinker, a 1-1 one, one lifelink, and then we can also pay a black mana, exile the Drinker from our graveyard to incubate two, so that gives us more board presence afterwards. And then there's two copies of the Corrupted Conviction as a card draw spell, sacrifice a creature as an additional cost to draw two, and then at two mana of course Skrelf's Hive is an important one to keep making might tokens, great at helping us transform Elish Norn, and it will also help cast our new removal spell, Pylon, a four mana instant with Convoke, so we can tap any number of our creatures to help cast it and reduce its cost, and that means we can potentially cast it without having any untapped lands, which is quite useful. And then we get to destroy a creature or Planeswalker, and we get to Surveil too, so that can also help put some of our creatures like Drinker in the graveyard, where we can still get value from it, same with the Butcher as well. And then we also have two copies of a Gift of Completion as an enchantment saying when it enters incubate three. And whenever a Phyrexian we control dies, we get to surveil one. So once again, it gives us more card selection and ways of filling the graveyard, which can also come in handy if we want to make our Carnage Dominus indestructible, playing this as a one-off. Not sure it's actually all that great, but it's fun to include since there's not too many other decks that will find a home for it. 
and this is an 8-3 legendary Phyrexian, saying if a creature dying causes a triggered ability of a permanent we control to trigger, that ability triggers an additional time. So quite nice with Chorus making an extra 1-1, we can surveil an additional time with completion, and then both Pilgrim and Vran also get to trigger an additional time, so there's quite a few synergies with our Carnage Dominus if we can keep it in play, and we can potentially protect it by making it indestructible, by potentially even paying 4 life if we're fully tapped out, and exiling 3 creatures from our graveyard, so that's another reason why a surveilling with pile on and with cards like the completion can be useful at enabling our dominus. And then we also have two more removal spells with invasion of new capenna. As an additional cost, we have to sacrifice an artifact or creature, and then we get to exile a target artifact or creature in opponent controls. This is one of those new battle cards which will enter with four defense counters on it, and then we can deal four damage to it to potentially transform it into the holy frazzle cannon, an equipment that can equip for one mana, saying whenever equipped creature attacks, put a plus one plus one counter on that creature and each other creature we control that shares a creature type with it, so it can be another nice anthem effect. Not sure if this is better than Rite of Oblivion, but fun to try out the new cards here. And then the mana base includes four copies of the Seed Core, which can fix our mana for Phyrexians, so just a nice card to have. And occasionally we'll have Corrupted enabled, and then we can pump some of our 1-1 tokens. And then a few dual lands with Shattered Sanctum, Caves of Koilos, and then the channel lands offering a tiny bit more interaction, even have a few legendaries to give them a discount. So this is my take on a black-white Phyrexian Sacrifice deck. You could lean more heavily into the Incubate theme, which I've tried as well. There's the one mana creature that can animate your Incubate tokens for free, and that two mana, there's the Norn's Inquisitor as well to give those extra counters. That's a different type of deck I've also experimented with, but for now I'm happier with a lower curve, lots of cheap sacrifice fodder, and then focus on some of these sacrifice payoff cards. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw. Hands pretty mediocre, but with a conviction sacking drinker we might be okay. Opponent on Asper. This is unlikely to stick the landing. Alright, we got to hit for two. Next turn we could pile on. Got a few of those. Just hang on to our conviction for now. Uh-huh, angels, I see. Archangel Elspeth. Can make a token. This can also destroy Planeswalkers, luckily. So I guess we'll attack the opponent directly, or we can make them chump, but I don't see them necessarily chumping when Elspeth would still survive. Yeah, let's just go face. It's kind of a close call. Alright, fine. Racing the 1-1 lifelink is going to be kind of annoying. Alright, point lots damage happen. Not really what we wanted to see. I guess we'll just hang on to Pylon and then maybe kill a creature they play next. Alright, Elisa is a good target. And do need more lands. Okay, so now if I attack Elspeth, our opponent might double chump, and then we can still pile on. Alright, so that worked out, I guess. And a Processor and an Elishnorn are both nice. Probably keep Processor first. And then next turn I can Processor plus Hive, which will then fuel Elishnorn. Sanctuary Warden, pretty good to exile with our invasion. Let's 
So, what's our plan? Exile Warden, sacking probably the drinker then. And play processor, or we can put the drinker in play and play hive, which is also reasonable. Processor has a more immediate impact. Hive sets up Elishnorn a bit better. And this I can only do as a sorcery, so I won't be able to keep up conviction. Okay. Can try and finish off the battle next turn. Aaron Tanjana makes sense, so Angel Tribal can play Angels of the top now. Do I animate my token? Would be a 3-3 thanks to the Butcher. Could attack with it. If they kill Butcher at instant speed, that's kind of bad. Or we can play Processor and then keep up Incubator slash Conviction. Yeah, I guess let's see what the response to Processor is. There may be counter spells involved. Okay, yeah, that worked. Yeah, let's try and activate this. And now, at least if they try and ambush my token, I can sack it to the processor and it's not too bad. Alright, did we get to transform our battle? We did. So now we get a fun equipment to pump up our team. So I've got a few different angles of attack. Got the Hive going wide, Processor going tall, Cannon pumping our team, and then we've got an Elish Norn as a leftover. Alright, they did have a Fateful Absence after all. If that happens. Removal on Butcher and then block with Errant could have been pretty effective. Overseer's next. Take two. Okay, how many creatures do we have in Graveyard? Just a one. Could equip Cannon, play Elishnorn. Or we could play Elishnorn, keep up Conviction. Although there's a chance they'll try and kill the creature equipped with a Cannon as well. So maybe start there. Don't think the plus one counter that we miss out on Elishnorn is a big deal. Alright, so I could just Conviction now, so I get to draw two. Or we could let it happen and play Elishnorn, which is also reasonable. Get another clue. Okay, does Elishnorn resolve? It does. Is there a third Fateful Absence? Valor stands instead. Fair enough. Okay. Still have a couple clue tokens we can crack, and now the Carnage Dominus has more fuel in the graveyard. Still need a third creature before we can make Indestructible. Blue Path of Peril. Pretty effective. Well, I guess we've got our third creature now. No need to go for it now, but in response to removal, we can make indestructible. Get to double our death triggers, which could also come in handy. Another overseer. Okay, the flyers are starting to add up. Can invasion one of them, take care of Errant and Jada, sacking a 1 1 token. Or we could try and get rid of the one blocker, so we get to smack them for eight. I guess we'll start by attacking. Question is whether I want to equip the cannon, maybe on the one one. Sure.
That's jumping. If we can get a bit of poison going, then the Hive could also gain lifelink. For now, do we want to exile Errant and Janet? Feels like they might have another one in hand since they haven't cast some of those spells for a while. So in that case, maybe pass and then either crack the clue or maybe activate the incubator token to apply more pressure. And we can always conviction if necessary. Jad of the top's nice. And a Dran and Linvala, which can copy our abilities and shuts down our abilities as well. So might have to pull the trigger on Drivnod here. And then I'll pay one black mana and two life. Take four. And then Drana and Limvala, we can try and invasion. And then could go for maximum pressure, but of course we can still activate it next turn and for now draw. Okay, so let's say we invasion. Sack the 1-1. One, one. Exile Drana. Animate the Incubator. And then I can still play a Gift. Don't think it really matters. Go face. And that should be 12 damage. Sweet. Close one here against Angels. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand seems fine. Could use some more cheap sacrifice fodder, but it's not going to turn it down. Well, let's see what we're up against. Blue, red. Okay. Next turn we can play a Processor. Going on Teamer Colors. There might be Borborygmos and Fibblethip in our future. For now, an invasion to discard and make a treasure. And a backup Illish Norn. Okay. Could potentially cast an upkeep pile on if we want to surveil into a land. There's Invasion of Ixalan now. At least we're dealing a good bit of damage. If we can curve straight into Elishnorn, that would be great. So no need to pile on. Okay, Chorus isn't bad. Might have wanted to tap the Seed Core to cast it, but that's fine. Attack. And then I could sacrifice to the Conviction to hit my land drop right now. And still get a token out of the deal. And another Chorus. Alright. So we've got all the creatures we need to set up Elishnorn to transform. Although the game might be over before that happens. A Raptor to transform Invasion of Ixalan. That works. We'll be able to give the team menace with Butcher. And that should do it. Could have also played an extra drinker to grow the uh, bloated processor onto the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a decent hand. 
Hive is a good fuel for the processor, can enable Vran, and then eventually Elishnorn. So probably lead with Hive. Opponent on a multicolor deck with turn to Bankbuster. Next turn we could double spell Vran and Drinker, although Vran will be better once we have a processor in play. Okay. And if they take it out, we can still incubate. Opponent passes with four mana up. Could go with uh, both Vran and Pilgrim, which would add up very quickly on this board. So let's give that a try. Then we're going to want to sacrifice one creature in our turn. All right, opponent's got to make disappear for Vran. Fair enough. Attack, and I'm tempted to sacrifice a token here to the processor. Opponent's at 14. Next turn we can double spell Drinker and Elishnorn. Fable's fine. And as spites, we can just sack a token here. Grow processor. And new cards. People will learn. Alright, pylon could also come in handy, but for now. Kind of like double spelling. And then Elishnorn threatens to transform next turn. Could also pile on by just convoking, and of course we don't have to attack with Pilgrim. Pass it back. And yeah, with a Pilgrim on the battlefield, and a bunch of Phyrexians, our opponent's pretty close to dead. And with a Vran in play, it definitely would have been game by now. But we'll see what Fable can find. Looks like there's quite a few dragons. Warcrafting. Okay, so let's just pile on, kill the Shaman. And then sack Elishnorn to the processor. Butcher will be quite nice. Yeah, processors doing work. Let's see if Butcher gets the job done. Can attack all out. And even if they remove just a processor, that's not going to be good enough. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. Missing white mana, so sadly won't be able to keep this. This is a bit better. And we'll just get rid of the Carnage Dominus which I'm not too close to casting. And butcher into Processor. Got a few removal spells. Opponent red-green with an invasion. And more removal. Okay, opponent can transform Invasion of Ixalan, make their Dino, which we can then potentially take out with Pylon. Even if it were indestructible, we could still exile it with Invasion. Now 
Okay, let's keep up the pressure. And then Butcher we could keep. Um, although putting in the graveyard can provide a bit of value later in the game. And then Vran's not bad either. Maybe I'll keep uh, Butcher first and then Vran. Hit for six. Another invasion of Ragatha. Can quite transform the first one. Okay. Take our draw, play another Lord. And smash. And then next turn with Vran, we should be able to close out the game just from sacrificing my creatures. A raptor can finish off one of the battles. They may as well go face since they get to redirect to the battle anyway. Alright, and our opponent explodes. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand is missing a third land, but should be able to pick one up, especially with a conviction. Butcher a nice pickup as well. Up against a Bant deck. So I think I'm probably better off playing my Conviction to hit my land drops. Sacking a Drinker. Maybe should have main phased it to play around a uh, counter spell. There's always a tiny chance they try and kill one of my creatures. Opponent with hideouts. Could also not sacrifice anything and then next turn Butcher hit for four. But I think hitting our land drops is going to be pretty important. There we go. And then now Vran also excellent with the processor. The next turn we could double spell, double two drop. Or we could process her again and get the token from Drinker. Vran also a legendary to discount Iganjo for what it's worth. Unlikely to be relevant. Aha, uh -huh, Tatiova, so it's a ramp deck. Don't have any removal in hand. But a pilgrim could be nice too. So maybe wait on Vran, just go Pilgrim into Butcher this turn. And I don't think there's a painless way of tapping, is there? No, I guess there is. And smash. And yeah, with uh, Vran next turn we could do quite a bit of damage. Sack a creature, drain for three. Borborygmos makes sense. When it gets to draw, maybe take out one of my creatures as well. Sack the Butcher to the Processor, trigger Pilgrim. Okay, so good options. Could drinker for one mana and then sack the artifact to get back butcher, give the team menace and get in there. Then our opponent could double block the drinker so that one may not attack. But if they take the rest, then they're taking five, six, seven, eight, down to four, then they're definitely within range. The alternative is just play Vran and attack with probably just a Processor and Pilgrim. Let's do the math. If I Vran, attack, 
opponent probably trades. Get to drain for three here. Three more in the opponent's turn, potentially. Yeah, you know what? That's probably going to add up to enough. Yeah, opponent goes for a trade. All the trades, in fact. Play processor, and then next turn we can make a pretty large incubator as well. Another Tatiova makes sense. And a Wayfinder. That one can get lines back from the graveyard, so good synergy with Borborygmos. Can untap. So let's say we pay two mana for the processor. Just play another processor. And smash. Is that three? And then next turn we can go wide with the butcher, giving the team menace. Keeping Vran alive was also reasonable there. So Tatyova can turn the lands into creatures soon. Conduit nice with a fetch land. So they'll have three blockers but I'll have three menacing attackers, which will still be enough once we give the team plus one plus one. This one does not have summoning sickness. And smash. Okay, that should do it, unless their opponent can cast something for two mana here. Sweet. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and double Elish Norn's a bit redundant. I think I still keep. Chorus and two Butchers a nice start. And then we can sack. Crawling Chorus to Invasion if we need to remove something. Up against Red Aggro. Could be tough. Don't want my uh, Crawling Chorus to take damage while the opponent controls Etching, since that can exile my creature. It's your opponent's Blue Red. And there's Swift Spear with a counter. That one we might want to take out. Another chorus is pretty useful. There may be a bounce spell here. But at least we'll be resetting the plus one counter if they do. Alright, that happens. Attack for four. And sure, we'll go for the battle. So now we get the equipment to pump our team. Could be quite powerful next turn if we don't get to play Elishnorn. And Ledger Shredder into Consider. So they were holding the one mana instance to be able to connive here. Discard Phoenix, which they can get back if they cast a burn spell. It's all making sense. Okay, play Butcher. Equip the equipment, and we're off to the races. Sadly, may not get a chance to cast Elishnorn. Points already down to six. Three poison, so if we find our Skrelf's Hive, we can give a lifelink, and our opponent explodes. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand seems pretty well balanced. 
Horus into maybe a Hive on two. We'll set us up for Elishnorn against the red green. And the sooner we get this going, the better. We'll be able to set up our Convoke on Pylon as well. Play Pilgrim, attack. And if there's removal, we can Conviction. Okay, some Lacrum's fine. Could still Conviction just to draw two. Yeah, don't hate it. Could have also sacked the Chorus, I suppose, to keep more tokens in play. So now, could play Processor, and then still pile on. And attack with Pilgrim. And then next turn play Elishnorn on a more stable board. Don't think we need another Processor, don't think I need another land. There's white mana in there too. I'm gonna try and transform Elish Norn here as opposed to go all in with the Butcher, which may end the game before we get a chance to transform Elish Norn. Alright, Duelist makes sense, so it's a plus one counter deck. Duelist drawing extra cards. Okay, so maybe Processor can attack. And cross our fingers that Elish Norn can stick around for a turn. Simulacrum's fine. Alright, it might be happening. Duelist draws. And initiates. I guess initiate could eventually destroy our saga if we're not careful. Alright, I'm not going to waste any more time. Elish Norn transforms. And yeah, that's a lot of power and toughness. So, can maybe play Butcher next turn to give the team menace. For now, just pass. And then if they want to blow up my Saga with Initiate, they can by removing counters from the Duelist. Which may have been a reason to offer the trade for it with Processor or Pilgrim, since we have a backup anyway. But Butcher next turn should be game as well. Alright, achievement unlocked. Finally got to transform Elish Norn. If our opponent goes second White Source into some sort of Sweeper here, that could still be bad. Although then I can still sack all my creatures to the Processor, draining them with Pilgrim at the same time. Nope, partners instead. Thank you, opponent, for indulging me. Duelist gets to draw. And attacks all out. Sure, I guess we'll block here. Team gets double strike, Pilgrim into Butcher, and smash. Sweet. Alright, it took a few attempts, but glad we persisted and eventually got to see the saga in action. Did not get to see too many Elish Norn triggers, but of course that can also come up in some matchups, especially against red and green decks, where the opponent's going to be taking a lot of damage from hitting us, or they have to pay the tax. So overall, this black-white Phyrexian Sacrifice deck was quite impressive, even if Elish Norn herself didn't really make a huge impact on the overall outcomes. But uh, 
quite happy with how the processor interacted with most of the other cards in the deck. And then the Butcher giving the team Menace and plus one plus one, being able to get it back pretty easily from the graveyard, also played quite nicely. Just make sure if you're playing this type of sacrifice deck that you prioritize having lots of cheap sacrifice fodder creatures like the various one drops and the Hive can also help there, otherwise the deck's not really going to function. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.